Team USA made its fourth quarter run primarily with that lineup. Steph, KD, Embiid, LeBron, Booker. The Americans, they outscored Serbia 32 to 15 in the period, held their opponent to 0 of 9 from 3. And that was after Serbia made 15 of 33s through the first three quarters. So let's welcome in the man that knows this team like no other, our senior writer Brian Windhorst, who of course is in Paris. But your days there are dwindling. We get you to come on back here. Speaking of, Brian, it was a comeback for the ages. You were in the building. What stood out to you the most? Yeah, so being around the team after the game, this was a real bonding moment for them. Mm. I mean, you had LeBron and Steph embracing. Joel Embiid, obviously, this is one of the biggest moments of his career. He's, un he's unfortunately not been able to deliver in the biggest moments, and here he was going head-to-head -head with one of his biggest rivals, Nikola Jokic, and frankly outplaying him down the stretch of the fourth quarter. He had Kevin Durant, who cares so much about playing for Team USA, delivering one of the biggest shots he's ever had for the national team, which is saying a lot there. I mean, this was really a, a moment that galvanized them. This is what they were looking for. And I mean, you, you really have to make a decision decision, Malika. You can choose to focus on wanting to look for ways to criticize them. They are there. Their defense was not good. Their, their collective was not great early in the game. You can criticize the lineups or whatever, or you can look at how big of a challenge this is. Serbia played its best possible game. They had been building towards this moment for a decade. These players had been coming together, preparing, and they, they had the perfect game at the perfect moment and pressed the U.S. to the limit, and the U.S. punched back. And they did it with tactics that they've learned together playing FIBA-style basketball over this last month. Or you can take a look at it and say, well, they should have won by more points. Mm -hmm. Being around them, I'm telling you, there was nobody on that team who wasn't completely joyous about the way that game played out. Well, and you could kind of feel that, right, with what Kevin Durant was saying after about we're all going to remember this for a very, very long time. And you could see it in the emotion that all of them really had on the court. You could see how much that this meant to them. This wasn't, oh, we expected to win this game. This was, no, we know we were on the brink and look what we were able to do. But now they have a new challenge ahead of them, right? In France, Steve Kerr, he's made some changes to the starting lineup in the past. Do you think, Brian, and we're going to see another change to the lineup ahead of this gold medal game. So France has played a couple of different ways here. They they obviously can play big with both Gobert and Victor Wembanyama. When the U.S. put this roster together and they recruited Joel Embiid, one of the teams they were preparing for was the French and the idea that they may need to use multiple centers at one time. That's why they've got three centers on the roster, Anthony Davis, Bam Adebayo, and Joel Embiid. But over the last couple of games where France has really turned everything around and pulled back-to-back -back upsets over Canada and Germany, they've played very small. Gobert has not played much at all. Victor Wembanyama has started at center. So if they go that direction, I would think that the U.S. would maybe look to play a little smaller. Now, I know what everybody wants to know. They want to know, is Jason Tatum going to play? Mm -hmm. Because for some reason, to a segment of the population, whether Jason Tatum plays or not, is the referendum on this team. Well, all I can tell you is this. Jason Tatum, on the, in the game against Brazil, uh, in the quarterfinal on Tuesday, he was the 11th man. He was, the, he was the sixth player off the bench. He played because of foul trouble in front of him. So I would expect that he would be again on the fringe of the rotation. Steve Kerr talked about this today. He explained that in his viewpoint with the way that second unit is playing, he wants to keep them together. And it's, he referred to it as a math problem. And I understand you can get your calculator out and divide all the minutes by 12 and say everybody can play. But the evaluation here is that the way that they've got this first unit and second unit, that Tatum is really on the fringe. And, and that is the, the style that they've played. And this is something that I've learned watching national teams, watching teams win championships. I'm sure that Jason Tatum is very frustrated by this. But I'm also going to say that when you win, it means never having to say you're sorry. What Steve Kerr and Team USA is doing right now is leading to victories. And if they get one more, they will have made one of the great uh, uh, you know, victories of Team USA's history. Turn to you now, Tim. Do you think that we should see any rotation changes from Steve Kerr? No, this is not the time about warm fuzzies and feel good. Don't. This ain't the time to pass out <laughs> orange slices at halftime. <laughs> rotation is what it is. If anything, it's going to get shortened. Mm. I mean, just like you saw, you saw the, the main guy's minutes go up 
against Serbia. It's it's not about making sure everybody's happy right now. It's about winning a gold medal. Yeah, I mean, how often do we ever have conversations about an undefeated team, right, needing to change its lineup and rotation? This does not happen. They are winning these games. Yes, it was tight. Yes, it was tighter than anybody would want to be, but they are winning these games. And Tatum, an important point to this, Tatum is young. He will have more opportunities to have these Olympic moments. All right, so the United States facing France in the gold medal game. This will be the second straight gold medal game between them and fourth overall. France, of course, lost that 2020 gold medal game, but did defeat the Americans in pool play that year. The only loss Team USA has taken in the Olympics in the last five Olympics, right? So what, what do you think the biggest challenge is going to be here, Danny? I think the best defense is their offense, and that's trying to slow down Wimby by having them attack Wimby. And you got to use Joel Embiid and Anthony Davis. They have two guys that have really good experience and played him this past year. He's still a rookie in my eyes until he plays his first game of a second year. But we got to see the Joel Embiid that everybody's been waiting for and want to see him imposing his will, getting deep into the paint, getting to the basket, and you know putting that shoulder on Wimby, leaning on him, using his weight, and tiring him out. If he tires him out on defense, he won't be able to have his legs offensively to shoot the stretch three and all those things. But this is where Joel's at his best and where USA is at his best. They can rebound, they get efficient shots, him at the rim. Same thing with AD. He's no, he's no small guy either. He can use his shoulder, he has body, he has weight to him now. He's not, New he's not AD from New Orleans, he's AD from the Lakers now. Extra 30, 40 pounds. Use that shoulder, use that body. Best way to limit a shot blocker is go straight at his chest and right at his, right at his directly at his face. And so you can't block your shot. Right here, same thing, ISO on a mid post area. Attack him, try to go around him a little bit, but mostly going straight through him to his chest. AD big finish at the rim. This is the best way to slow him down and make him tired and fatigued so that he doesn't have his legs offensively. All right, so from the NBA to the world stage, you can see the yeah. Team USA centers <laughs> here. I was like, Joel's only played him one game. He had averages 70 points against him. He had the 70-point game. Yeah. AD's played him twice, 32 and a half, 33 points a game, but you got to give some credit to Wemby. He's only a rookie and there's only one game against Joel, so he did have a 70 points, though. Maybe you should take a four-time defense player of the year, the reigning defense, the reigning player, defense player of the year, player out of the mothball to deal with these guys and with the gold medal on the line? Good help. Know. Good help. Brian, are, are you expecting to see that or to see Rudy or we haven't seen him very much here? I, I don't think so because, again, hmm. I know that Rudy is extremely popular. He's one of the most decorated French players in history. The team is playing better with the small lineup. I'm going to give you two names, and they're not two names I thought I'd be saying right now. Issa Cordonier and Gerson Yabaselli. Mm -hmm. These are the two guys that have changed everything for France. Victor Wembanyama made some plays in this last game against Germany. He was also four of 17 shooting. Team USA's preparation is on Cordonier, who is six of 10 on threes over the last two games. He is brought, they are, they are weak at guard. He, he has come in, he's got a little bit more size and he's been hitting his outside shots. They've got to get ready for Cordonier. And Gerson Yabaselli, you may remember when he played with yeah. uh, Boston, well, he is a bull. You should see this guy's, you know, strength. I mean, his legs are extremely strong, and he's smaller, and he plays much faster. So I know this is going to be thinking about the stars, and, you know, I'm just, you know, if you search French Twitter, you see some of the same things that you see on American Twitter about um, who should be playing. But the, the, the changes that Vincent Collet has made has gotten France to this point. So yeah. I would think that they're going to continue to play small, and the, the U.S. Not the, near the top of their list is, is Cordonier. Cordonier is, is been the difference-making guy for this team in the last three days. I'm glad to hear that the debates over who should start, who should be in the rotation, are not just limited to the NBA sphere, but they are going all over the globe, just as Brian Windhorse has done for us in his Olympic coverage. Brian, this is actually the last show you're going to be joining us from Paris. <laughs> and we could not bring this photo back. No notes. Absolutely excellent. But in all seriousness, Brian, I'm framing that photo and <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you have done for us in your Olympic coverage. It has been outstanding. There is no one else we would have as the voice of the Olympics on our show.